go on tomorrow. Uh, and, and, and so I'm, I'm going to invite each of our speakers to reflect uh, perhaps on what they have heard over the last two days, uh, in particular whether there's things that we didn't hear and probably have perhaps should have. Uh, I want to end promptly at six, and I want, before we end, I want to be sure that each of these guys tell us um, basically the bottom line on what is the what are the chances that we're going to have another blowout in the world rice market in the next two or three years? That is, what is the, what's the probability of another rice crisis similar to what we had in 2007, 2008? Now, you can build up to that answer or you can start out directly. Uh, these guys run the, the leading rice model in the world, so if anybody knows, uh, uh, at least analytically and from the data, what's what's going on out there, these are the two people who do. Uh, why don't I let Eric start and then uh, Sam, Sam finish? Uh, Sam, Sam rep represents Erie. Eric, please. Fine. Uh, er Eric's a professor at the University of Arkansas, and uh, with that, with, with, without question, the leading expert in the U.S. on the U.S. rice market and one of the two or three leading experts in the world on the world rice market. So somebody knows what he's talking about. Well, let me uh, just update, actually, the presentation we made yesterday. Um, in fact, uh, Whoa. <laughs> things are changing that things are changing quickly. Um, you know, we've, we're seeing, actually, a lot of pressure right now on the prices. Just uh, since, uh, these are just numbers, uh, from August until yesterday, uh, these price quotes, U.S. Uh, export prices have gone up $160 a metric ton. That's in a three month period. That's a 40% increase in the U.S. export price in the last three months. Um, <clears throat> a, a little more modest uh, uh, movement in the Thai, the Thai prices of about uh, 50 to $60. Um, and the Viet prices have gone up about eighty dollars uh, for about a twenty percent uh, increase. So, uh, you know, my sense is that the global rice economy remains a very fragile uh, market. <clears throat> One of the things that, that the, the, I think that was interesting for me that I learned from this conference is. Um, to see how much is going on, not vis-a-vis -vis the global rice market, but within a lot of domestic rice markets. Um, <clears throat> I, um, you know, you, you look at the global rice market, and I can think of all the sort of uh, bad things associated with it that that are going to, I think, keep it as very vulnerable to the kind of uh, price spike that we had. Um, I mean, there's, uh, you know, just the, the really continuing ongoing lack of transparency, um, the extensive role of parastatals here in Asia, um, rigidities in, in, in public decision making, uh, and then I think just, um, you know, we were, I was talking to a fellow uh, during the break and he just talked about just the frequency of extreme weather events that have taken place over the last four or five years compared to uh, 20 or 25 years ago. And, and I, so my sense is that, you know, we're starting to see the impacts of climate change and, and uh, linkages to biofuel pul pul uh, markets. All these things, I think, are really exacerbating. I think what we can see as a and move towards stabilizing the global rice market. On the positive side, though, again, and again, I, what I thought was very interesting about this symposium, and uh, I want to thank Sam uh, for putting this uh, conference together, because I know it, you, you really brought some uh, very interesting people here to, to present. But what I found interesting was uh, sort of the, what I view as sort of the prospects of, of what's pushing and and um, moving this global rice economy. And I see a lot of that, a lot of variability and heterogeneity at the, in the domestic market structures, um, the growing role of the private sector, 
and investment. Um, you know, I, I think that uh, certainly this disintermediation that we're seeing in terms of the post-harvest uh, uh, circumstances, the rise of the supermarket, um, this I think is a very uh, interesting and important, potentially stabilizing uh, structural performance change in, in, in domestic markets that is going to have some uh, long run positives for the global market. Um, longer term, you know, I, I think you think about the diversification of the Asian diet, I think this is also something that's going to help take away this, this is sort of uh, vapid uh, concern about uh, the fear of of, uh, associated with with shocks to the production systems. Um, so and those are those are the main main ideas, I guess I've I've, I've learned from yeah. this conference. I, th I think part of the role of the panel the, the panel is that I actually get to say something uh, as well. I want to uh, I want to put the paradox uh, on 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 the table here. Um, make. Listen to Jikun Mong tell us how much China is spending on its R and D and basically on developing its agriculture. Um, China's rice economy is in pretty good shape this year. India is sitting on huge surpluses. Thailand's got five million dollars or five million tons of stocks that doesn't know what to do with. Uh, and yet, the market is really, really nervous, and it's nervous because. Think about this. Indonesia needs a million tons of rice. Whoa! That can move the world market even though India, China, and Thailand are all sitting on plenty of rice. There's something clearly wrong with the world rice market. It is really messed up. Uh, and I would hope that before we all get out of this conference, that we at least put on the agenda going forward. How are we going to fix the world rice market? Uh, what are the steps that it's going to take so that we can actually open it up, have much more uh, visible price formation, have much more open trade? Uh, how are we going to take those steps? I spent four and a half hours yesterday at the ministerial roundtable and everybody sort of understands the problem and nobody had an idea on how to move that forward. Uh, I have to say, my proposal, the let's get countries to invest in larger rice reserves, everybody understood that, well, yeah, that would solve the problem, but nobody wants to do it, and certainly nobody wants to finance it. So I'm, uh, I come away from the two days uh, at a bit of a loss on what I think is the big agenda question, is fixing the world rice market. I understand we need to invest a lot in R&D and get rice productivity up, and that will make the world a lot less nervous. But we've got a very, very nervous world right now on the rice situation, and I'm hoping that uh, maybe we can make some progress on that. So that's my two bits worth. I'll let Sam finish. Thank you, Peter, and uh, good evening, everybody. I think we are still here with this hours of this before, before I say anything about the rice market, uh, let me just uh, say that uh, thank you all uh, for your lively discussion. I think this uh, one and a half day has been excellent uh, in terms of what we want to achieve. And, uh, and the ERI and the Asia Congress, we would like to continue, continue this, uh, this type of forum on an annual basis. Hopefully, we are going to do it, uh, wait until the next three years, until we have the next, next IRC. We plan to have another of similar things. Hopefully, we'll have some answer. We, we raise a lot of problems and issues. Hopefully next time we'll have some answer how to fix the market, how to make sure the uh, regional rice reserve will work, that cash uh, baby in terms of uh, uh, ADB's focus. Uh, I, hopefully we'll have some answer. But again, I'd like to congratulate all the presenters and the audience in terms of your live participation. Please uh, you know, keep in mind that uh, next year we'll have the meeting somewhere. The, the location has not been decided. Uh, please plan the meeting. With that, let me just say that, you know, for last day and a half, uh, I've heard from various speakers, including Peter and many other people, uh, saying that we, we may have already technology available or will be available in the next five to ten years. 
to to have the to have to improve the productivity. But we are not sure whether there will be enabling factors. Uh, investment and policy environment will be, will be there to make this technology potential realized in the production. I think that our next uh, next conference should focus more on trying to find solution into into the policy aspect, investment aspect. I didn't hear a lot of solution in the whole uh, one and a half days I was here. The thing is, we don't have the solution. You know, I think the bottom line is that uh, we don't have the solution there. So hopefully, the next uh, next uh, uh, next. Uh, next uh, uh, second uh, conference will be much more useful in terms of finding a solution. I was proposing cats that the ADD and ED should jointly host this conference or forum uh, next year uh, somewhere in maybe Manila or maybe some Delhi, Delhi or maybe somewhere else. So we'll decide and uh, let you know. And uh, let me talk about uh, Peter's question about uh, uh, rice market. Uh, where do we see uh, the rice price in the next six months or two years? I think Bill Chai is not here. I think he put it very rightly. Nobody knows what the price will be tomorrow. Forget about the uh, next six months and two years. And it, it is not based on fundamentals. You know, he, he talked about politics, uh, policies, so many other things, factors into this price market. So nobody exactly knows what the price will be. But if you, I think Peter put it very eloquently saying that you know, we, have, we have so much production. You know, and we have so much in the stock. The countries don't know what to do with the stock. At the same time, we have a market which is very nervous. When, when the price in last month has gone up by $80. It used to take uh, uh, months for price to move by $10. Now it's taking a week for price to move by $10. At the same time, we have uh, rice rotting in India. We had, a, we had a Supreme Court had to intervene a couple of months in India, actually warning the government not to procure so much rice because it's rotting outside in the monsoon. They lost so many million tons of rice. Then they I can attest to that. I think they want that you need to give this rice to the poor people. If you have millions of people dying without food and you have millions of tons of rice sitting in Bihar, UP, near the railway station and rotting there in the procurement. So, so it's very isolated. We have one side, we have too much rice. Countries don't know what to do. And the other side, we have very nervous market. Uh, I don't know. If I have to the dict what the price will be, I think the next three months price will go down. Uh, because I think India has to export. Uh, somewhere they have to send this rice, uh, you know, few billion tons, uh, because they, the, 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 the new rice is coming in. There is an initial meeting in, in third week of November. Uh, I think most likely they will decide that uh, the government is going to sell some from G to G. But I think they will still not allow the private sector to export non rice. That's, that's my take. I think market is just waiting for that to uh, happen. I think it's just watching what India will do. Uh, I think over the long run, I think the, you know, Eric told it correctly that we are uh, we have you know Asian uh, consumption pattern will diversify, per uh, capita consumption decline. Although Peter and me will be saying here the extent of this diversification, but we are definitely we are diversified. And he also put it this morning very nicely that. And we really don't know what will happen to Africa. You look at the historical data, there is no trend of slowing down. Whether it's going to continue in the future, it's going to, there is an inflection point in the future, we really don't know when this could happen. And he actually told very nicely, we might, if the trend continues, we might be needing another 100 million tons by 2050. So, you know, I think that may not happen, but that's what the, 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 the trend is showing that. So we have a lot of uncertainty if you take out this short term fluctuation there and what's going to happen in the future. But bottom line is that we need to improve the productivity. I think nobody denies that fact. Doesn't matter we diversify, we don't diversify. We know that area is not going to increase, area is most likely going to decline, and we need to need to jack up the productivity growth. From, from 8% to 1.2 or 1.3%, <coughs> which will keep rice price affordable. And I think that's the message I am taking that technology is there, but the more important is policy and investment in all level of supply chain. Uh, I think that's what uh, our focus should be in the next round of conference sometime in next September. Thank you.